So good evening, friends. We are so delighted that you chose this breakout session focused on how the newest department of the school, the Center for Peace, Equity, and Justice, helps to shape upper school student life. Tonight, a group of adults and students who regularly collaborate on peace, equity, and justice programming will share with you exciting information on what makes Friends Seminary's upper school unique. We will we'll share examples of what can happen when student leaders are empowered to make a difference in the world. So we're gonna pause before we get into it to just introduce ourselves to you. I am Lietzel Shane and I use the she, her, her pronouns. I am the Dean of Co-Curricular Programs, which means that I oversee value-based programs at the school, including the Center for Peace, Equity and Justice and I'm responsible for coordinating its vision, staff, and operations. Good evening. I am Jason Craig Harris, and I use he, him, his pronouns. I am the Director of Diversity and Inclusion, and am responsible for implementing the K-12 Diversity Inclusion Program, as well as advancing the integration of diversity, equity, and inclusion values, practices, and policies in all areas of school life. I'm Kimby Heil, I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm the Director of Service Learning and Civic Engagement, and I'm responsible for implementing K through 12 service learning and civic engagement programming, as well as supporting teachers in integrating service learning and civic engagement into all curricula. I'm Allison, um, my pronouns are she, hers, and I'm a senior at Friends, and I'm a co-leader of the service committee. I'm Ananya. I'm also a senior at Friends. I use she, her, her pronouns. And I'm the co-clerk of the Agenda Committee and the leader of Asian Culture Club. Hi, I'm Bryson. My pronouns are he, him, his. I am a senior at Friends. I am the co-leader of Raising Awareness Advocating for Diversity Club and a member of the Black Culture Club. Good evening, I'm Julian. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm a sophomore at Friends. I'm a member of the Service Committee, the Raising Awareness Advocating Diversity Club, and the Black Culture Club. So Friends Seminary has a vision and a commitment to be a forward thinking school, grounded in the past, but with our eyes on how the present and the future should inform our teaching practices so as to equip students with the capacities and the competencies to be engaged citizens and world-minded leaders. As Dean of Co-Curricular Programs at Friends, um, over the last 10 years, I have been a part of a team of educators that have developed programming that aims to prepare students to engage in the world that is and to help bring about a world that ought to be. This value-based and purpose-driven approach to education has transformed our classrooms and sparked deeper understandings of social and emotional learning within our students. Tonight, we aim to unpack our school story with you and look forward to learning about how it aligns with your own hopes and values when it comes to education. One of our favorite quotations comes from founding Quaker leader, George Fox, who said, let your life speak. So much of what we do at Friends is based on this simple and enduring idea. Our educational program strives to link knowing and doing in a context of values. We aim to lead lives committed to bringing about a world that ought to be. To empower students to let their lives speak, the school realized a decade ago that it had to make a very intentional shift toward a more synergistic approach to values-based programming. The school would bring together in a single department the educational leaders of the service learning, diversity and inclusion, global education and environmental sustainability programs, all united by a shared commitment to Quaker values. Harnessing the collective expertise of these programs was an innovative step. The 
The Center for Peace, Equity, and Justice is the home of these formerly separate and siloed programs and practitioners. Now, when programs or curricula are developed, the team looks at it from many critical perspectives. When we help students identify a global challenge they would like to address, we can empower them to ask big questions, such as what broken systems have, has given rise to this problem? How can we be allies to those most negatively impacted by the problem? How can we ensure that change is sustainable? Learning to ask these kinds of questions, um, it means that students are even more prepared earlier in life to explore, discover, and articulate purpose. Not only does this unique approach to education impact student learning, it also impacts students' identity development and motivation to act, to engage, and to transform their world. Friends Seminary believes in the transformative process of head, hearts, and hands. The concept's three components can be broken down as follows. The head speaks to the importance of educating ourselves to the complexities of 21st century challenges. The heart speaks to the importance of building empathy and understanding for those most directly impacted by these issues. And the hands speak to the importance of action and developing within each of us as global citizens, a sense of social responsibility. We're now gonna share with you a few stories that illustrate how our heads, hearts, and hands come together to make change. Each year, the Center for Peace, Equity, and Justice brainstorms with the community a theme to organize its major programs. In the 2018 to 2019 school year, we focused on the diverse social program problems that peppered the American landscape. While we explored a variety of subtopics, a focus on conflict, harm, punishment, and restorative justice captivated the community's attention. The upper school community wanted to better understand mass incarceration and the way prisons often create more harm than they solve. So CPEG created a year-long exploration of these issues that would allow the student community to learn about them more deeply to understand them at an empathic level, and then to take informed action to change things for the better. Head, heart, and hands. Personal story is critical to understanding complex social problems. To understand the impact of mass incarceration, we brought in guest speakers whose lives have been touched by the criminal justice system. For example, during an upper school assembly, we heard from Akeem Browder, an activist whose brother had been unjustly jailed at Rikers Island and was later subjected to long-term solitary confinement, which had lasting impacts on his mental health. Student moderated panel discussions allowed us to hear from multiple perspectives. We were able to compare and contrast the stories of different people impacted by incarceration. In addition, we held lunchtime discussions where we explored these issues at a deeper level. Not only did we learn more from each other about these critical issues, but we also practiced important skills like perspective talking, like, like perspective taking, perspective giving, and active listening. As a result, we even felt closer as a community, realizing that the different identities and life experiences we had allowed us to see different things. In January, these learning efforts intensified in a deep dive day long conference for the entire upper school hosted on campus called the Day of Concern. And while the Day of Concern is a day off from classes, it is most certainly a day on for an engagement. During that year's Day of Concern, we were immersed in sessions with guest thought leaders who helped us better understand the intersection of race, power, policing, and the everyday difference that engaged citizens can make. But we did not stop there. It wasn't enough just to explore the issues of mass incarceration and solitary confinement. We had to begin to think about solutions and alternatives. In February of that year, 
During your annual week-long exploration of Quaker values of peace, we hosted a change maker, Brian Stevenson, the author of Just Mercy, who challenged us to imagine a world where restorative justice was at the center of how we handled harm and conflict. That same week, we partnered with the organization Campaign for Alternatives to Isolated Confinement to host for upper schoolers a virtual simulation focused on the horrors of solitary. Life in a six by nine cell without contact for extended and unpredictable periods of time is torture. We had to act. We rolled out petitions to city and state lawmakers to end the practice of solitary confinement in New York. We asked our peers, teachers, parents, and caregivers to sign. We learned that it isn't enough to advocate for someone's freedom from prison. We also understand what life could be like once they got out. On our annual day of service, we participated in a stimulation exercise in partnership with the Osborne Association so that we could better understand what reentry looks like for a person whose society has slept with the label of second class citizen. We were forced to reckon with the privileges that we have as student as the student of friends. The dead ends we faced in the situ in the sim simulation activity as we looked for a job and tried to secure government services inspired us even further to act for change. Our learnings brought us to the state capitol for lobby day to advocate for a ban on solitary confinement and more just alternatives to incarceration. In advance, we participated in several lobbying 101 workshops to make sure that we were prepared to speak to lawmakers. Then we traveled to Albany where we challenged lawmakers to pass legislation that would reduce sentences for nonviolent offenses and equip jails and prisons with trauma-informed practices. And while we are exploring different themes this year, our work on race and justice in America continues. Giving students the opportunities to engage and serve communities is a vital part of the student experience here at Friends. As a student, I appreciate the head, heart, hands approach to service and I experienced it firsthand when I was part of a student team that organized a volunteer effort with Books Behind Bars, a nonprofit that serves the incarcerated. Friends always challenges me to learn more, listen more, and love more. This work is iterative. Students learn, serve, and then learn some more. And some of that work extends into the summer. This past July, we facilitated a course for students to deepen their understanding of race and justice and to learn how to facilitate courageous conversations on race, an essential skill in the toolkit of a student who wants to be a change maker. Students learned the age old indigenous practice of circle, circle keeping and were equipped in turn to apply their knowledge in real time. After students completed the summer course, they were able to serve as facilitators in our school's summer dialogue series on anti-racism. In August, students joined us to hold circles after Jacob Blake was shot in the back seven times in front of his children. Together, we processed this horrific event and considered ways in which racial harm occurs in our very own community. We also brainstormed ways we might address that harm, both at Friends and beyond, in the wider communities of our city, state, and country. The summer course and dialogue series is yet another example of what can happen when service learning and diversity, equity, and inclusion work come together, and when students are empowered to lead the way. Another example of students leading the way came during the early months of the pandemic. The Center for Peace, Equity, and Justice created virtual lunch discussions to highlight encouraging stories of the many people who rose up to address many of the COVID-19 challenges. It was our version of John Krasinski's Some Good News. Students had the opportunity to host sessions and interviewed featured guests. At Friends, students are given many opportunities to step up and use their voice. 
Another example of opportunities for students to be designers and creators of programming can be seen in our school service learning modules. Each module is designed to allow participants to dive into a particular topic and learn about it, it using a lens of justice. Participants have the opportunity to read articles, watch videos, and write on threaded discussion boards. At the end, participants can connect with organizations actively working on issues related to the theme of the module. Along with some of my fellow students, I recently helped design a module that focused on voter suppression and students participated in a triple the vote drive. The Friends Global Education Program strives to foster real world engagement through strategic partnerships and global immersion experiences based on values of mutual respect, cross-cultural understanding, equity and justice. Just before COVID-19, Friends Students International Travel included a trip through South India and a trip to Taiwan. Students also had the opportunity to travel domestically on a trip through the South to unpack the history of the civil rights movement. While the pandemic has suspended these experiences for now, it is a vital part of the CPEG program. Students on this um, discussion panel can share their takeaways. I participated in the civil rights trip that included stops in four cities, Birmingham, Selma, Montgomery, and Atlanta. Our trip leaders planned a full itinerary that included listening to personal narratives uh, from freedom writers and firsthand stories of activists on the front lines of marches and protests. Through these stories, we were able to develop an appreciation for the history and creativity of nonviolent direct action, of boycotts that removed bodies, that removed bodies and of marches that install them. By visiting public memorials like Kelly Ingram, pa Ingram Park and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, churches like 16th Street Baptist and museums, including the Legacy Museum, I gained an appreciation for the ways in which the past stretches into the present. I was part of the group that traveled to Taiwan. This opportunity gave me an opportunity to practice my language skills. And while I appreciate all my experiences in country, I also value the pre-trip connections that we forged with our peer exchanges. Friends' global ed immersion experiences always include pre-trip activities and collaborative partnerships that foster deeper learning for students during their travels. I was fortunate to be enough to be part of the student group that traveled to South India. There was so much that I took away from the trip, but two things I learned from the experience are that food is a very universal way of understanding a place, a culture, and a tradition. Um, we sampled a wide variety of regional cuisine every chance we got. Um, art is also another window of understanding. I appreciated that this trip gave me an opportunity to tour the international um, Biennale and Kochi. Friends Global Education Programming also takes advantage of the virtual world to connect students with their peers around the world. Exchanges through our News Decoder project allow students to explore current events and host webinars, such as the most recent one co-hosted by Friends and the South African Leadership Academy in Johannesburg. This year, students will be partnering with students in South Korea and are currently in talks with one another to choose their global focus. We hope these stories we've shared with you have given you a, a, a snapshot, some glimpses of what a friend's education has to offer. So we actually have a little bit of time for, for Q&A and we'd like to invite you to raise your blue Zoom hand in the participant window uh, and then we can call on you uh, should you have a question. Do not be shy, my friends. If there's a question that's bubbling up for, for you, we'd love you to raise that Zoom hand and to bravely offer that question. I believe Monica has a question for us. Monica, can you unmute? 
Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, I guess I was wondering, you had talked about your, I guess, the topics you dealt with from 2018 to 2019 in your uh, conference within the school. What do you think um, your next topics will be for your day of concern? And I feel like there's a lot to choose from. I believe I'm going to pass that question to Lietzel, who's going to share a few more thoughts. I can share that. Um, we last we also just finished a focus um, around climate change, climate sustainability, um, and our students were very engaged in those types of topics, subtopics related to that. Um, this year, we have settled in on really exploring race in America. Um, it's it, it seems like an obvious one that, that all of our nation is wrestling with and our students are ready and teachers in the upper school are ready to really tackle this. One of the things that we hope we got across to you all is we think that it's important not to just have a lot of one-offs, one-off events. You know, you bring a speaker in and that was great, but that's it then. Um, so we really intentionally design our curriculum and our co-curricular programming to be threaded across the year and have a multitude of different activities so that we're constantly building off the experiences that came before it. Thank you very much. Raphael, I see a hand. All right, thank you. And you seem to have quite a lot of interesting programs uh, by which to promote equity and social justice. I'm just curious as to how exactly these different programs fit into your curriculum. Sure, I can start and then maybe somebody else will add on. So there is, um, in terms of upper school, there, we have a, a service program and a service committee that offers different extracurricular programming as well as many clubs of which students on this panel are a part of. We have also a religion and social justice class that Jason teaches that's part of the upper school history department and all ninth graders as a part of their ninth grade history curriculum participate in something called the Youth Philanthropy Initiative, which where they are able to learn about a nonprofit in the city and uh, interview that nonprofit, really dive into understanding their financials, where they are funded from, and then pitch a presentation on behalf of that nonprofit to try to earn a $5,000 grant that then actually goes directly to the nonprofit. In our lower school and middle school, we have some other program and curriculum that all students go through as well. And I'm sure if you had specific questions about that from a student perspective, one of our students could pop in. That was a beautiful question, by the way, Raphael. Thank you so much. Um, we have another question in the chat here um, about the, the possibility of a future civil rights trip. Um, apparently the trip has, what Bryson shared about the trip really spoke to a number of people and folks want to know that post COVID, are we going back to the American South to retrace the movement again? Um, I can answer that. We absolutely are. Um, in fact, the trip is we think important enough that it is offered as a, what we call a looped trip, one that happens every so many years so that an upper schooler during their four year experience could take advantage of this. It's just that important for us as citizens of this nation to really unpack and understand. It was, as Bryson shared, really powerful to hear the firsthand accounts um, to, to worship in some of these churches that were such um, important meeting places for those communities during that time. Um, so yes, we do plan on continuing that. And we also work hard when we move into these countries as well as cities domestically to partner with those in the community um, to not really take it as a touristy approach, but to spend the time connecting to community members and the people that we speak to, the historians, we, we want to make sure that we are um, uh, holding them up. Thank you so much, Lethal. So we have a question here for the students. Um, so students, we have all these fantastic programs that you've been talking about all night long. 
um, how in the world do we have the time to do these programs? So could you share a few words about uh, what times of day or how, how do the programs fit into your daily schedule? And I think Bryson would like to respond, so. Yeah, um, I guess for me, it's kind of like sprinkled out like throughout the curriculum, you know, like um, kind of just adding on to what can be said. Um, you know, from ninth grade, we start off with YPI. And then um, from then on, like there are many opportunities throughout the school year to, um, um, to engage in um, a lot of service uh, related activities. I know like when I went, for example, like when I went on the civil rights trip, um, that was during like, uh, that was during a, a two weeks of school. Yeah, that was um, during like the two weeks of school, like in the fall. And like um, my classmates were like going to class and I was on this trip and it in I was at first like really nervous about it because I was like, oh, no, I'm going to like miss out on all this work and stuff like that. But um, ultimately, I feel like at friends, teachers have uh, teachers and students have this understanding that when we go on these trips, it's to like enrich our like um, understanding of um whatever the uh, whatever the um actual sorry um whatever the uh subject of the trip is for example me it was the civil rights movement um we're going there to learn more and engage in it and so i feel like at friends uh we really are able to not necessarily forget about our work and like oh yeah don't like don't do that but um <laughs> have this understanding that like i'm here to learn and I feel like teachers like get that and like will help you. Definitely. And as Bryson said, because social justice is such an integral part of the Friends experience, like of uh, preparing us as students to be part of the world that ought to be, um, this service learning and social justice experience are really built into the day. So we also have a lot of discussions during the lunch period and we have after school events as we have speakers coming in or those hosted by clubs. And then besides that, we also, as mentioned earlier, have our day of service and day of concern. And on both those days, all classes are canceled. And we also, obviously have the club meetings led by the different culture clubs, the Raising Awareness Advocating Diversity Club, and a lot of the other clubs which do prioritize these issues, which give students a forum to um, have discussions and organize events as well. And then finally, we also have assemblies as well as some events on the weekend. Recently for Hispanic Heritage Month, we did have a wonderful event of celebration on a Sunday with music and dancing and really celebrating the culture. Thank you so much, Ananya. And we have time for one more question. And great, I see that one has landed into the chat. Um, a question for the other students. Let's see, Allison and Julian. There's a question here about the service requirement. So, you know, you have a graduation requirement for service, I believe somewhere around 100 hours, um, which is a beautiful distinction that you graduate with. Um, wondering if you could talk to us about how you balance academics and fulfilling the service requirement. I mean, is it is it hard? to do? Uh, I would, if you don't mind, Julian, I'll go first. Um, I don't think it's necessarily that hard. 25 hours is, I think, not too demanding on people. And I think that as part of the service committee, we're really mindful when we're planning these events um, to plan them at times where many people can come or like when people are free, because we, um, Kimby, Leitzel, Jason, you guys are um, part of faculty, um, but Julian and I are students, so we do know when we have lots of workload. We have a heavy workload, so we do plan around that. Yeah, and as Allison said, 25 hours a year, it seems like a lot, but over the course of, I don't know, eight or nine months, it's, it's really not that much. Um, during a normal school year, we would have five hours of in-school service and then 20 hours of out-of-school service, where in the five hours of in-school service, it could be helping a teacher organize their papers 
or helping out in the library cataloging books or something like that and out of school maybe helping with your church um soup kitchen or as also a service committee we compile a bunch of resources and opportunities for the students to um, engage in opera in uh, service um, and in community service so honestly it's it's really it seems like a big number but it's not that much and it, it goes by really fast and a lot of the time students end up completing more than the required amount of service well thank you so much um, it's time for us to begin to move back to the main session and Kaneta has just dropped into the chat um, a link back to that main session and the passcode that you might have to um, type in. Uh, thank you for your time with us, buddy. I see that your hand is up. I know that in the next session, the Q&A will continue. So perhaps you can move your question to that session and we can answer it in, in that next Zoom room. Thank you all.